Hello everyone, this is Patrick. Patrick, go. <laughs> right. I, I'm going to talk to you about uh, naming how you get to fungi names. But part of my talk won't be about fungi. I'm going to tell you a little bit about names and how things and people get named. And I'm going to tell you why we need names. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how we got to the system that we now use for naming fungi. So all that's a sort of bit of history uh, to make you think about the big problem there is with naming fungi. So I'm going to start with the business of names. We, most of us don't think about names at all. We've, we've all, almost all got two names. A lot of people have got three names. Um, and names tell you things. So, if you're Scottish and you're called MacDonald, what that's telling you is that you're from a big clan of people, a big tribe of people, all of whom are descended from some bloke called Donald, way, way back. That's all it's telling you. Um, you might know, if you're Scottish, um, that they have a particular kind of kilt. So if you see someone with that kilt, you know that they're a Mr. or Mrs. MacDonald and that they're not Campbell or something else. So there's some names that are to do with groups of people. Um, there's other names in Scandinavia, in Sweden and Norway and Iceland, <coughs> Denmark. Um, most people used to live in small villages. So if there was a bloke called Johan drawn to us and he had a, a boy child, the child would be called Johansson, the son of Johan. Mm. Um, so you knew in the village where he belonged. And how the daughters and, and, went. Hmm? The daughters were... Um, uh, Johan Dottir. Yeah. yeah. So um, th those names tell you very little unless you live in a very small community. There are lots of other names that tell you something about what the person does. Um, so that if you're called Smith, you would be somebody who was working with metal. Um, and, you know, that came right down. Tells you absolutely nothing about who you're related to. Um, so there are a whole lot of different systems of names. Most of the European ones um, relate to the, the male line. So uh, Johan, Johansson, um, it follows in that way. Strangely, in Spain and Portugal, the mother's name and the father's name both pass on to the next generation. So all, all I want to leave you with from this little, this, this is nothing to do with mushrooms, but this is telling you, why do we need names? Why can't we just say, you know, uh, this one is white, this one is not, whatever. In my view, we need names because you can attach a whole lot of information to the name. Anyway, so you can, you can ask an auntie, it doesn't work in Australia, you can ask an expert, we haven't got any. It's very disappointing. <coughs> you can consult a field guide. This is Bruce Fuhrer. There's about 500 species of fungi in here. You can look in here. It's a field guide. It has photographs and a description of the mushrooms. Um, the problem with Bruce's book, and um, there's a, a wonderful example here of some earlier work that Bruce did on how to identify fungi, which people can have a look at later on. Yeah, that's the copies. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you can look in a field guide. There's 5,000 odd species of macro fungi in Queensland. There's 500 in here. You've got a 10% chance. Bruce worked mainly in Victoria and Tasmania. And just like 
the Europeans discovered Australian fungi weren't the same. We're sort of discovering um, that Queensland fungi aren't necessarily the same as the ones in Victoria or Tasmania. A bit of a problem. Um, get fungi down under from Fungi Map. This is this is a really good book because the, this hundred fungi they selected to put in it were all chosen because you can recognise them from a photograph. Um, I reckon you can probably identify more than a hundred from a photograph, and Fungi Map are working on a second hundred and intend to publish it quite soon. But about 200 are probably recognisable from photographs. So that gives you a 4% chance of finding whatever it is you've brought in. Um, this, this is something that Fran and Sapphire and I did. There's about 100 in here. They're all found in Queensland. So you've got a slightly better, it's still only 4%, but a slightly better chance that you will find something that's been um, collected in Queensland in this book. So field guides is the main way that people identify things. If you think of the birdos, I mean, there are, what, six, seven hundred birds in Australia, a lot compared to most other countries. But they, they have field guides, and unlike mushrooms, where you go and collect them, we don't shoot the birds anymore. They used to when we first started, but you know, we, we do it all from pictures now. So <clears throat> you can consult a field guide. The next method is that you use a key. Now, botanists, all, uh, there's lots of botanical books. Um, which explain to you that, you know, if the flower has five petals, it's in this group, and if it's only got three, and if they split them in the middle and both sides are the same, all that stuff. Um, you go through steps, uh, it asks you questions, is it black or is it white? If it's black, you go to step two, if it's white, you go to step five, and so on. Keys. Carol Groginovich, in about um, just before 2000, 1998, um, translated all the work that had been done by Australia's most famous fungi man, um, Cleland, into a book and produced keys um, for all the ones that Cleland had described and a few more. There's about 500 in here. It's biased. Cleland worked in Adelaide in South Australia. It's biased slightly towards South Australia, but he did travel around to New South Wales. I think he even visited Queensland a couple of times. So uh, this is the best set of keys that I know. There are individual keys for some genera of fungi. Um, but getting hold of them is exceedingly difficult. And they're, they're published in journals which are not freely available on the internet. You have to pay loads of money to get a copy of a, you know, they're, they're talking about 40 or $50 dollars to get three printed pages of a paper from the um, Australian Systematic Botany or wherever. So, if you ever chance upon, you know, get a fungus, you ask someone what it is, and they say, oh, I'll just go and have a look, I've got a key to those, I'll go and have a look. Uh, I mean, say, say thank you for the answer, but also say, please, may I have a copy of that? Because mm. next time you can do it. Um, so method four is to use a key. Um, me method five is, difficult um, and I, I'm, I'm not into it but I know that some of you are and that is that um, 
you take a picture or a couple of pictures and you post them on Facebook or you post them on iNaturalist which is a bit better than Facebook and in theory um, somebody who is an expert will come along and say oh yeah I know what that is and gradually you build up and if sufficient people say that they know what it is then you've got a, a good answer but bear in mind that you can only do about 200 of them from photographs <coughs> I don't know what Facebook does, there don't seem to me to be any sets of rules, but iNaturalist allow you to put in a description. And some of the people who comment on the photographs say, well, did you check so-and-so? Which is something they can't see from the photograph. And if you did, you're in with a better chance of getting an answer. Um, I, I, I think iNaturalist is a as a wonderful system, but it's missing the people. Mm. We're, we're back to we haven't got any experts. Mm. Mm. That's what I think. Uh, I mean, we, we haven't got any people. That's hard. Uh, and mm. we, the, the few that we have are so busy that they're not going on iNaturalist and doing because it would take. That's why it was great when Melbourne was in lockdown because everyone was responded to your naturalist photos. <laughs> and now they're out of lockdown, nobody keep them locked. Keep them locked. <laughs> <laughs> That's one good thing. So, okay. yeah, exactly. There, there are five, five ways of doing it. I'm, I'm going to suggest that I shut up now for a bit, mm. and we're, we're going to see how you get on with identifying a fungus. Yeah, she's a big girl. I'm pretty sure that the color, the small color, the small color, the small color, the small color, the the Yep. You're going to get to see all of these. Yeah. Great. Is there any more? Um, I need the stinky one. So that, that's not a key yeah. or anything, that's just giving no. you some detail that you what can use. What else did we bring? Oh, yeah. Okay, don't touch this one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, you can change it. Yeah. 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 Hold on to it. I'll collect them yeah. back up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've had about 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, how close so do we get down? Stop, stop, stop. 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 Okay. We weren't prepared for this one. <laughs> can, can I have hands up people that think they absolutely know the two names of the mushroom, the genus and the species? The difference between think and absolutely. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Some, somebody who feels really confident. Okay. Um. We did, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, we do. Who, who, who should I give those two little yellow mushrooms to? Does it look rusty? I've got the yellows. I, I can't say they were a lip. lip. Probably by our president. So let's try it. No idea. Yeah, I've screwed up. I'm struggling with these. I got to something that I thought it could be. I look in you. Hang on, I'll just put the last scope in. Look how itty bitty they are. Yes, WTF. It's Luca Caprinus Bingormii. That's it. Yay! Bright yellow, it grows on mulch. It always grows on mulch. Um, I, I've actually found it in a forest today, um, but growing on mulch. And um, it, it's sort of bright yellow, mm. and uh, it's, it's just got a jizz to it. This is something you can identify from a photograph. Um, how did you find 
The name. The name on um, Queensland Mycology Society. <laughs> Mycological Society. Mm. Yeah. It's but called what method did you use? Yellow I, I, I tried to use <laughs> yellow <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah. 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 That's what I do. <laughs> what, what, it's what simple. Did you find? Sometimes it's simple. Yeah. Sometimes it works. <laughs> Just ask Google. Yeah. Do you know how to yes. use a microscope? Well, I'll have a yeah. go. Great, go Yeah, please. Um, I'm sure it's Caprinus. What are we looking at under something there? Related well, that's what we're trying to find out. Yeah. Um, and just so looking just at... You'll have to look at the It's pretty clear. Okay. Well, you got to Caprinus. I think that's the next one there. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's all right. You did this. Yes, we'll the, the, the question is why isn't it a sarsaparilla? Because I've never heard of a sarsaparilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, Caprinus is I think that we've had very Caprinus and looked that up. Yes, Capri Caprinus is have very dark spores, mm. and uh, <coughs> the word is deliquesce. They sort of melt um, the gills. Uh, into a sort of ink-like substance. And indeed, in the 19th century, it was used as ink. Um, it was also a genus with black spores uh, called satyrella. And the thing about the satyrellas is they always have these very white stems. Um, and you tell the difference between Caprinus and satyrella. Um, so it's on the basis spores. of the spores. So you, okay. you have to get the microscope out and look. But Caprinus is a very good guess. I mean, you're, you're in the right area. So who, who else knows the genus of what they've found? Ah. Uh, that one there is... Uh, is there a spore pattern? Uh, yes, yeah, so we know the genus. Plurotus? Plurotus. Plurotus, yes. yes. But I couldn't get down any further than the genus. Yes. Mm -hmm. so we don't know. Where, where was it found, please? <laughs> on a palm tree in Gimby. On a palm tree in Gimby. On a palm tree? Yeah. In my backyard. <laughs> Are you likely to have spores that well, it is a have yeah, escaped from your, um, <laughs> from your growth chamber? We, we have a couple of native pleurotuses, I think. I don't know whether I've let that one escape. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I yeah. was but getting a Loads DNA of to people have got Pleurotus kits mm -hmm. and they're growing Pleurotus ostreatus. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Did we tell you we had it DNA'd and it didn't come up that? <laughs> <laughs> so it could have escaped, yes. But Pleurotus, most likely ostreatus, uh, edible fungus, comes in now because of gene modifying, it now comes in about six different colours in the supermarket. Mm. You get yellow ones and pink ones and grey ones and chefs it's think it's wonderful mm. but they all taste exactly the same. Mm. So okay we've got Pleurotus. What else have we got? We've got Marasleus. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh. We're both down. Sorry. Oh wow. Isn't it gorgeous? Gorgeous. Yeah. Marasmias? Yes. But yes. Yep, marasmias. Definitely marasmias. But not sure about the species. I'm not either. Oh. Uh, we have got an expert on marasmias, mm -hmm. Fran Gard. She's okay. she's actually gone the whole thing and she knows more about marasmias than anyone else in Australia now. Member of the Queensland Mycological Society. Um, there are two or three pink ones. Uh, my suspicion is that this one hasn't got a name. So you get to Marasmius, and that's as far as you're going to get. Can I take a photo? Yeah. Uh, Marasmiuses are small, they grow on wood, and they have very wiry, often black or two-tone stems. Sometimes they're completely black, Sometimes they're white at the top and gradually get darker brown uh, or black further down. Mm -hmm. um, next. 
I've got an agaricus here that looks like this. We were looking at water patterns before. It's going to say, that just looked like that had been dry around. This is an agaricus. We, we have several agaricuses here. There's one here. Um, they tend to, many of them start out with pink gills. Um, can you see the pink gills? Yeah. Um, they're, they're often white. They have a ring round the stem. Um, oh, yeah. I'll pass it round. Mm -hmm. They have a ring round the stem. Um, if you get an agaricus, they're almost all edible, except for xanthoderma. And the way you tell xanthoderma is you scratch the stem with your nail, and if it turns bright yellow, you don't eat it. Um, if you make a mistake and put it in the pan and fry it, you get an awful smell. But there are about 20% of the population in Europe that can't smell it, and they don't get sick if they eat it. Mm. It's like seriously weird. Wow. We don't Genetic know why. evolution. <laughs> um, if you get one, don't, like a spider, don't, don't, don't risk it. I mean, because they, they don't taste nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. But this is most likely Agaricus campestris. Um, you see, you're going to be asked what colour the spores are. This is from the same collection. Mm. And this, this is just showing you why mm -hmm. doing a spore print is important. Because mm. if you pick it up like this, you say, oh, the spores are pink. But actually, when it gets a bit older, you can see that they're chocolate brown. So you've got to be very careful. Um, colour of gills does not tell you the colour of spores always. Mm. So with the spore print, that should be brown. The spore print of that will be brown. This color. Even, the, but what about the pink one? Yeah, it'll yeah. turn that. Yeah. When this gets a, a day or so older, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I did it this morning. So it gets brown after it's released from the spores. Still didn't answer my question. See, I don't think it was that one. That one or it still has the spores inside. It was just sitting there. Sorry. Like it was it, sitting. Does it get? Does it turns from pink one? to brown yeah. after releasing the spores? I didn't yes. put it back in a box. Yeah. I just had it. Back. Yeah. What about if you did the spore print now on the pink one? You might have to wait till a few hours to get a spore print because this is quite young. Mm. Oh, that doesn't have spores yet. The spores ripen, mm. so it's like well, you know, all the apples on the tree are green right. until they get to the ripening stage, and then they turn to turn red. Or <clears throat> the, these, the gills are actually pink, and what's happened is the spores have matured. And they're brown, so now it looks brown. But the gill underneath is probably still pink. Yeah. Take the spores away and it turns uh, pink again. Well, sometimes. Yeah. It's not It's not that easy somehow. Yeah. Now, who gave you this? Well, yeah, I don't have any. I haven't found it. I didn't identify it. Well. You can't identify it. Well, I didn't put much effort in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, can't, I can't identify it either. Oh, I've I no, no idea what it is. Oh. What was it growing on? Chip Park, yeah. Mm. In lots of little clusters. Don't, don't, don't know. It says... Pass. Oh, uh -huh. I've got a couple of genus identified. Yeah. So for this one, I thought it was the Plutiolus. The Plutiolus? Where it was yeah. attached. Yeah. Plutiolus <coughs> You're, you're, you're into modern generic names. That's what was on the key. <laughs> <laughs> and this one was these tiny ones that Jim and Phillips. Which one's a Plutiolus? Is that the little. This guy here? Yeah. Cool. These are the And. and that's interesting because I, I don't know Pluteolus. Did I give you a slide for that one? Uh, yeah, that's that one. That's three. Yeah, okay. That's what I need to write down. Uh, and what did you think this one was? Uh, Gymnopilus. Which we think it is. What, what was it growing on? Swamp mahogany. 
and they get much bigger than that. That's really tiny. Think, yeah, they're, they're tiny little starters. Yeah. Possibly, <laughs> I I wouldn't know when it's that small. I mean, a gymnopilus is. Yeah. 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 This, yeah. That particular that, that log sort of is very, very productive. It's, 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 it's right at the end. end. It always grows on logs, on quite yeah. hard wood too. Yeah. So it's a, a, a good guess, but I wouldn't be so saying it was. I'm wondering about the correlation cool? between that what, what growing what on the log and the koalas leaving their babies in them, yeah. and they say that it's not uh, the hobby like um, koala chocolate. So I'm wondering, is there something in the leaves that is calming the baby koalas? You see? You know? <laughs> so mum can rack off, you know? It's a research project. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. could be a whole yeah, that's my project. research project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I got any more? Two. This one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one. Yeah. Trying to identify this one here. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like that. Yeah. But then that along here goes gills free and then straight up to there for the coprinus. But yeah. that looks like the gills are attached. Um, and on this. Have you cut one in half? Um, yes, I kind of pulled. <coughs> this one's a bit too destroyed. Um, I'm just going to give up on that because I didn't. Slide three, yep. With the. And that one. Sorry, that's just the. Still these for a moment? No. With the one of the threads flying. The, uh, as in, the phallus. The phallus. I don't have any of this. I don't try, I'm trying not to touch them. <laughs> They're very small. <laughs> it's, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to decide. I had to pull One of the questions you get asked is, are the gills, what shape are the gills? Yeah. And they go from decurrent, which is this, they go down down the stem, um, through a whole lot of other categories, and at the other end, they don't meet the spent stem, and that's described as the gills being free. Um, and for this to be in coprinellus... when I pulled them back, there's one that looks like it's still attached right there. Yeah, but is it attached to the stem? Uh oh, as in that one there. Like when I try and loosen the cap without detaching them, see how some. Yeah, I can yeah. see. I can see what you're getting yeah. at. It's it's a difficult thing to decide, but is it's it? one of the really important things in identifying mushrooms is to know how the gills are attached. Is it um, age dependent as well for some of the? No. No. No, it so shouldn't be. From the shouldn't start, be. it should have. It, it, it's age dependent from the observer. <laughs> the older you get, your eyes are not so good. And you need a microscope to be certain. So, how can you know if they are decurrent or not? It'll be if they are going towards the stem, they are decurrent. It's got to do with attachment to the stem. So way that this is attached yeah. to how it, how it attaches to the stem. Okay. Yeah. That, that is decurrent. They're coming down the stem. Oh, into the stem. Like yeah. That, down, 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 down. So, some mushrooms, the gills go straight across. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like this would be decurrent or no? No, no those, those are actually free. Uh, I can't that get one, that to go down anymore. They don't actually know. reach the stone. Yeah, they stay so there on the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do have another oh. idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Thank you. Yeah, that's too kind. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was that one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think they've become confused, but it doesn't matter. People yeah. can just look. Did anyone else want to have a look at the spores? Yeah. 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 Y
What, what I'm going to suggest is that we have a look at yeah. Fun Key. Yeah. Now, Fun Key is a thing done by Tom May and some of his associates at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. And you can buy it from Fungi Map to go on your laptop. You can also buy a version to go on your phone. Um, there's, su there's some debate as to whether it's still being sold and still working. I've, I've got a uh, mainframe computer uh, linked to it. So I want to show you how it works. Because most, most keys, and we'll, we'll have a look at um, Griginovich in a minute, but most keys um, require you to know what the genus is before you start. And what Fun Key does is take you to the genus. But it's also a very good way of learning um, <coughs> because you can go into what, what, what you have to do is go into the thing with the things that you really know for certain about the fungus. Uh, a key like Mugilovich will ask you, the, fir the first question will be, I don't know, uh, are the spores round or long? Um, and you've, you've, you know, you've just got to do that in order to get to the second stage. Fun key, you go in with what you know and you hope it's going to get you to an answer. So <clears throat> what we might do is since we, we, do we know what this is? The young lady? Yeah, um, she is a key. I believe uh, Cortinarius. Is no? A Cortinarius? The young lady here, she... Oh, yeah. Cortinarius. Yeah, um, correct. I think well done. We, we will try and get there via funky. Oh, cool. Let's, let's watch this. This is really good. I have this on my mind. So, if I can show you how funky works, um, you go to identify, and it opens a screen that's got four things on it. Um, and this is only for agarics, so we're talking about uh, fungi with gills and <coughs> with a stem and a cap. Um, although there are a few uh, with gills and no stem as you will see. And in the left hand box uh, you will see three um, headings. One is opening for me. One is microscopic characters. And I'll do it on here. No, it's going to sleep. Let's try and open it again. Why is everybody whispering? Because Patrick's sleeping. It's Saturday. It's, it's yeah, oh, it's a holiday. It's not supported. <laughs> it's <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> um, probably. I didn't think of that. Um, <laughs> anyway, I can talk you through. Macroscopic characters, it will ask you, um, the very first thing it will ask you is the spore colour. So you need a spore print for that. Um, we're back to freeze. Spores are very important for the classification of mushrooms. On the right hand side, there are 185 genera, it could be. 
Um, so if you put in um, the spore colour, and these are rusty brown, if you put in rusty brown, it will immediately move two-thirds of these down to discarded and just leave the ones that have rusty brown of which Cortinarius will be one. So that's one thing that you should always plan to do with Funky. The second thing is it will ask you um, how the gills are attached. Um, and if you put that information in you should be able to half the number of possibilities again. So you're down to sort of, uh, like, like this key of Bruce's here, you, you're, you're down pretty quickly to a small number of possibilities. It's got a wonderful thing here called a magic wand, <laughs> which if you click on it, it tells you what the next character is that is most likely to reduce the number. It's a very clever system. Um, and I, I, if I get a fungus that I really don't know what genus it's in, this is what I use. Um, I have it on my phone happening if you wanted to just tap it in to see what comes up. Or, and other people are welcome to have a go on it. What's the, what's the URL or the link? You pay for it, it's an app. Ah, oh, right, okay. Right. So you choose a, the colour. What colour are the spores of this? What colour do we decide in the end? <laughs> rust brown. So mm -hmm. rusty to okra brown. Yeah. It took us, it discarded straight off 124 of them. Cool. Oh, very comfy. Can we can we link that to the screen? Oh shit. Oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the least educated person I, in I the room. I can't understand Should why. Have asked Bell. So basically here it's got all the spore things like, and you just picked Valerie one, showed. and then we would go back, um, wait up, we want it back to macroscopic characteristics. Yes. So it has Pileus, Lamellia. Lamelli, go on, Lamellia. go for that. It's, okay, it says attachment, spacing, thickness, colour. So you can do colour. So what, what what is the attachment? Central. Central? No. No. Oh. No. <laughs> Hang on, I'll see if I can find it. It has little pictures. Eccentric. Has it has eccentric. Is that eccentric. The attachment? No, it's how the gills are attached to oh, the stem. Oh, are they, they even attached? The yeah. They might not be uh, attached. They come right in. Adnate maybe. Yeah. Right. I'd so and it has a little picture with it as well, just so to make it a little bit so. Uh, is that what you would call adnate? I th I think they're adnate. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna so put it adnate. Right so what does that look like? The adnate on the app. Can you explain it? No. Too yeah, much. the gills go down to the start. Okay. Yeah. Um, How many are you down to now? Okay, we're down to. It took eight away. It left twenty something, I think. Start. Will we do the stipe so now? What, yeah, what else do we know about it? Stipe? The stipe, the position would be central. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That left, tw got rid of three, left 24. So even though it looks a little bit eccentric, is it still central? That's central. central. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what a, a colour of our stipe we could put in? Yeah. Uh, a white? Yeah. White. 13 remaining. Mm -hmm. Colour of the cap? Okay, we'll go back to macroscopic. Uh, the cap is this, no? Yeah. Um, oh, so the colour of our cap would be mm, oh, an orange, mm. or is that a brown? What people call that? Brown. Mm. brown. If if you if you're rust. into fungi, there are endless arguments <laughs> about yeah. colours. Oh, yeah. rusty. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I would say that's a sort of brown. Okay, well, we'll go with brown. Twelve remaining. Um, now, now press the magic wand. Okay, magic wand. Okay. Best. Oh, wait. What's it asking you? Oh, this is about the. Oh, or is that asking us if we know that? 
No, it's ask, it's ask, now it's asking you about the spores. Okay. Um, we had the spores before. But this, this, it, I, I mean, I know it's a cortinarius. That was the spores. And I know that the spores <laughs> on the hill have yeah. little warts on them. They're still on there. Still attached. So, <coughs> the yeah, they're warty. Yeah, yeah warty. warty spores. Yeah, when you look at them in water under the microscope, they've got little spots on them. <laughs> Like warts. Oh. Hmm. It's a quaternarius. Cool. How many are you down to? Oh, I haven't. I don't know what to tick tick on that one. Water spores. Oh. <laughs> Colour. Go go back to spores. Yeah, go back to spores. Spores. Um, Shape, outline. Yeah. Uh, ornamentation. Oh. Oh, here we go. Warty. Yeah. It's a real word. Seven remaining. With, with this, you're going to get words that you don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. um, that it's a problem. Um, you've just got to look them up and learn them. Do have a um, glossary or something you can look uh, up? A, there's a, a nice glossary in Draginovich. I can never say her name. Mm. <laughs> Google um, is pretty quick. The, she's got a glossary. There, there are other glossaries of mycology on the net. <laughs> and so then once you're down to, like, this, there's seven left. Yeah. Yeah. You can even pull them up, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a photo yeah, so once of Once you're down to a small number, you can get yeah. up. And you get to genus. And then you have to go to um, a, a key to that, that particular genus. There's one in Gruginovich which we might try and use. Oh, good. But this is Cortinarius. Is is there one more that somebody wants to know what genus it's in? Okay. Where's the oh, oh, list? Um, would anyone else like to have a go with Patrick with the monkey? Would you like to have a go? Gil, you want to have a go? There's a handout. I'm not sure that I've got enough for everybody. You can get that but one off the Microbiological Society. Quick we can share. Yes. We can take photos of it. Um, oh, that's the stipe of the other one. Should we do... Oh, Patrick, do you think we should do maybe that Amanita? Do the Amanita, yes. Just to show people how... Where, maybe where is it? It's over there. We can grab it. It's just that. Okay. Let's... let's Oh, that's yeah, a good. That's an interesting one to do because it's yeah. got various features. <laughs> There's the Cortinarius. Some funky smells around here. Decomposing from here. Here you go, little Amanita. Would you like? Thank you. Mm. Who haven't got one? Oh. Uh, thank you. You'll find this is a two-page thing, um, but it has little drawings. If you look at uh, about halfway down, there's a heading which says lamelli attachment. Lamelli is a posh name for gills. Um, it shows you the free, adnext, adnate, I don't know what the next one is, um, sinuate, um, it goes through a sort of angle, yeah, um, and then um, uh, the current which we've seen. Um, has everyone got one of these? Yes? O on the back, when you, when you get to be more advanced, there's a thing with the names of the different shapes of spores. They're in here. Um, I just had to put something on the back. <laughs> um, right, we're going to do... All right, I'm going to stop there. This one now. Okay, the phone's there. Does anyone else want to have a go? Yes, yeah, does somebody else want to have a go? Does somebody else want to have a go? Because I actually, I know. Volunteer, please. Do you want to have a go? Yeah, with what? 
Oh, are you Super learning how to use the fun key? Yeah, let's do it. I'll, do, I'll, I'll film it with you guys going through it. But I have no idea what family is mine. I'm trying to find but I... We're trying to do... Let's do the Amanita because it's a Yeah, nice. they're going to do this Amanita. Don't worry. Because it's Patrick, a nice. will come help. Patrick will have a look with you in a minute. Okay, so let, let, let's... Um, hmm? What, what do, we do you want to drive it and I'll film it? What? This? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got that. Huh? All right, let's do it together. I'm going to film it while you go through it. <laughs> um, so I It's, it's got a swollen stem. It's yeah. Sort of a bulbous? Yeah. Bulbous stem. Good a word. Yeah. That would be <laughs> stein. Let's have a look. Just to stop you it's like the same shape. shape. The bulbous? Lies. Mm -hmm. Lies. Yeah. Nah. And there's a new one. Oh, yeah. It looks like a different mushroom, but I mean, it's a bulb. Is that also a bulb? I think we have to ask all these. Let's wait for Patrick to see what he is. Yeah. What do we decide next? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or do you turn yellow? So, is that a poisonous and one? What is it? I pass it round. Tell me what it smells like. Ooh, it smells. Sure. Smell, smell the, the gills. Mushroom? Yeah, I don't know if I would put my nose on the bottom. It was on the, on the side of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what smell yeah, it is. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's a chlorine smell. Oh, wow, of like course. Like hospitals. Nice. That, 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 like that will make you a bit sick. Yeah, it's very shroomy. That's an agaricus in the xanthoderma group. Because when I scratched it, it turned yellow. Oh, did it? Near the base of the stem. You, you can cut the stem in half and you will see it's yellow at the bottom. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat the yellow. Oh, yeah, there's the yellow. And then, so this Agaricus xanthoderma is the most common cause of people going to hospital from eating mushrooms in Australia. Because they think that it's this nice pink yeah. one. And they're going to have it for breakfast. Oh, that is very really different from this. The, one. the other it clue is like that if you if you face it upwards, it's very flat at the top. Yeah. Mm. And and the Garica xanthoderma usually has a sort of flat bit at the top. And um, the I, I I eat wild mushrooms, so I know this fella. And I know I'm not going to eat it. It's number 13. Mm. <laughs> and the gillies are um, white, whitish, not pink. Oh, wait for a small that, that is very young. Mm. It still it has the veil. White. Somebody yeah. was asking me about whether the, the ring starts out close to the edge of the cap. There it is. You can see it on that mushroom. Is this a ring or a veil? Veil. 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 The, the ring usually is a the, the ring is what is left on the stem. Yeah. Once the veil. Once it opens. The veil goes. Ah, so it yes. looks like this. So it, it, has, it has a veil <laughs> that <laughs> closes off. They it's think it's to stop insects getting in oh, and eating the gills and before so the spores ripen. It but we don't. That's the theory. Like a it's not been proved. Um, so not all mushrooms have them. But some, some do. Right. right let's so go which one do you say I've, this I've, I've, lost, I've lost the plot on this. Okay, let's do the key for this one. We've got diverted. So I've got a bulbous We're back sky. to trying to identify this. Yeah. On the fun key. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I've okay. got a bulbous sty. Yeah. <coughs> Done. That's entered. And the spores on this one will be white. Spore. I mean, if, if it's white. pure white like that and it's it's fairly mature, and you've scratched it, then I can. Put them in the microwave. It's not an agaricus, but I scratched yeah, it and nothing true. happens. Mm -hmm. So I've entered so the spore colour. White. Mm -hmm. And how many are you down to? Uh, about 46, I think. Oh, that's good. So we're down from 185 genera, it could be, to 46. 
by putting in just two things. That's cool. So how are the gills attached? You've all got a sheet now. How are the gills attached? Add next. A very good way of finding out is cutting it in half is to cut your mushroom in half and then you can see how they're attached. Yeah, if you cut the mushroom in half, we, tr we tried to do it with this little thing, but it didn't work. It was too small. Cut it in half and you can see, compare it with the diagram, whether it's free or attached or whatever. So is that one free or add an X? So not attached. Let's have a look. We'll have to free. cut it. Free? Free. Okay. Free. Go for free. Free? How would we do? Oh, it would just be lower down if it's added next. Yeah, okay. Mm. So that is the <laughs> oh, lamellae. So, well so lamellae and then <laughs> attachment. <laughs> and free. is it? Oh, they've got remote here as well. No, it's not remote. Free. Okay. Free? <laughs> free. Yeah. 12 How remaining, many? 18 discarded. I don't know. 18 discarded. And 12 remaining. No, 28 left. No, just 12 left. 12 left? Yes. We so we've, we've three, three things we've put in, we're down to 12. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do next? next? Thing? You, would ha you um, would have to cut it in. Yeah. Magic wand? We have to rule out the current. Should I yes. use can, the magic can, wand? Can the okay. Yes. Oh, no, okay. Um, it's looking for the Melzer Melza reaction. Um, no. Perispore, germ spore, wall thickness. No. So they, they're spore things. No. Um, we don't have a spore. Thing. We've pressed the magic wand. Yes. And it's wanting to know about the spores. <laughs> Again. Again. No. I, I'm afraid with mushrooms, <coughs> if, if you're really going to get down to um, identifying the species, you're going to have to get a little microscope and look at the spores. There's just no way around it, because so many of the things uh, only work in terms of knowing what the spores are like. Could we do that something on the clears? Attachments for your phones to turn them into microscopes. Okay, oh, yes. Microscope. Yeah. But you won't. But want to go I, down I've never to spore. Able to see spores. Yeah. Yeah. Doing that. Um, spores are And I mean, mi microscopes have become White. hugely cheaper now. They're all uh, oh. even the very best like ones. $5. We're down yeah. to eight yeah. from the colour. Yeah. My beautiful uh, ten dollar one. <laughs> this one you prepared earlier. Found at the dump now. shop in Kimberley. Yeah. Amazing. Still my favorite color color of the cat, color white. Of the cat yeah. is white. Um, surface. Um, what would the margin on this be? It looks almost, is it broken or is it just this uh, one? Is it actually like that? So it's like a long weekend and so Everybody goes shopping. What are you Brian trying to do now? Determine whether the edge of it has actually been broken I, I, I off on the on margin of the pileus. I've, I've got photos of the ah, two okay. ones. Can, can you see a little edge there around yes. the bones? Yes. 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 It's got a sack on the bottom. Even though we don't have the holiday or anything That's like that. It's got a sack on the bottom. So that would be the vulva? A vulva. So no, it's a reachable zone. Sacate or a free, it's free rim. Free rim? It's just, yes. It's, it's okay, okay, so three so remaining all, now. At one time it was all in the shop. So we, we have looked at the bottom of this, and like, like some mushrooms have a ring at the top, um, some of them have a sack on the bottom, which is called a vulva. And sometimes the sack is loose, but um, in this one you can just see, I pass it round again, you can just see the edge of it as a slightly different colour. Mm. And by putting that information in, we're down to three possibities. Mm. What would be the term for that? 
Um, it said a free ring. It only gave us three options. They were saconate and free rim, or um, a few, uh, not nothing. Saconate or a free edge. Um, so, sorry, I'll just go back to that part. That was the vulva. Yeah. So we, our options for vulva were absent, saccate or a free rim, or so scaly, ridged or zoned. And so, we so selected this, this saccate is, or a free rim. It's re really tight around the bulb, but you can just see an edge. Mm. Well, I can see it when I put my specs on. <laughs> um, at the edge, so and does, does it tell you what the three are? Does that makes them free. You go is um, into is that to see what how many is left? Three. Three. Think, so you hit that, the little your little the hamburger, hamburger. <laughs> okay, so and then enter these remaining. So you go. And what's the hamburger? Film. It's what they. I don't know. I just seen it the other day. Yeah. yeah. So what it's did it come up with? Amanita oh. chlorophyllum. And macro lepiopter. So, and we know it's an amanita because we know it. I'm, I'm very surprised that it's come up with that answer because chlorophyllums have green spores. Yes. Mm, and we said white. Super cool, aren't they? There must must be a chlorophyllum with a white spores, maybe. No. Mm. It's just that they don't. They didn't put green in because it's too. It's too uh, much of an exception, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think. So we don't really know what it is. We, we, um, it's an amanita. I mean, we know, but... I know it's an amanita. I know. Uh, and that's why you'd have to is start there a little bit of your I, I know that intuition. I'm not going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're going to eat it. Is there a characteristic <laughs> for the flat top shape? What would that be called? Uh, this one's not... Plain or applinate. Right. Plain. Uh, so, is that under pileal shape? Yeah. Pileal centre shape? No. Pileal, no, shape, overall shape. Overall shape. The best thing you can do is post it on iNaturalist. But don't just post the photograph. Post the, so the sort of things that we were looking at when we were using Funky. It's the sort of information that's going to help somebody else nail that fungus for you. So put some words in as well. Um, and and don't, don't try and complete it all, just do the things that are perfectly obvious, mm. like you scratched it and it turned yellow, like it smelt of hospitals. You know, it takes you to a gallery <coughs> of Santhoderma. You, you, you've got to look at your fungus. Don't just photograph it, pick it up, smell it. Unless you know what you're doing, don't taste it. I mean, I, I, I do russulas and lactarius, none of them are poisonous, so I taste all of them. Um, but you don't taste cortinares, because some of them are really nasty. You don't have to eat very much to get sick. Um, so f fill all that information in. Sometimes you never get to a name, but you still think you've got a really good mushroom here. You've never seen it before, so just write up some notes and send the notes and the photograph and the dried mushroom into the herbarium. Someday somebody will turn up, some PhD student, and work through that group of mushrooms. I mean, you know, it, it has happened um, and it'll happen again. At least there's some record there for the future. So we're, we're not passing on this information through an oral tradition like people used to do in Europe and people used to do here. Um, because we've all, you know, we've all <coughs> moved about too much. Um, 
I, I was brought up in Argentina, which is an immigrant country rather like Australia. And people don't eat mushrooms there. They have exactly the same problems that we have here. Because the, the local knowledge that was once there disappeared. And no one wrote it down. So you can contribute to that. You can, yeah. Have your name written down that you found that mushroom which has been described as something new. Um, I, I find that quite encouraging. So, yeah, that's all I can tell you about identifying mushrooms. It's hard, but when you get there, it's really worth it. And when you find ones that you can eat, that's really worth it too. Mm -hmm. They taste much better than the ones from the supermarket. Mm. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank Patrick. You. Thank you.